Good evening. Good evening. Okay, we're going to start the session number three. Uh, we are going to have just one more session this week. Um, and we're going to end say, the, the week number two. And we are in the middle of the course. So we're going to have just two more weeks to end this course. So we're going to begin. And I know that uh, some of the other participants are not going to be here because they are like, I think they are having troubles with the new, uh, with the things that some uh, do sometimes. And also because I know that in some uh, zones it's raining and now here is like, it is supposed that it's going to rain or something like that. I hope that uh, rain after the session because it's going to have like, we are going to have some troubles with the connection if it is it's starting raining right now. So we're going to um, begin with this new session and we're going to talk about a kind of long, kind of long uh, topic uh, because we have a lot of information of this topic, but it is very interesting because we are going to see uh, the construction of some words that we are going to use in English. So in this case, we are going to talk about compound nouns. The topic that we are going to develop today is compound nouns. Vamos a hablar de los eh, compound nouns, son nombres compuestos, lo podemos llamar de esa manera. Vamos a ver las categorías, muchos ejemplos, muchas palabras que son compound nouns, Y tengo una lista algo larga de compound nouns for you. But let me tell you something. We're going to have this list, kind of long list, but we're going to, in this case, if we can uh, write the list in this session, because I have a, a lot of information uh, first. If I have the list, we're going to write all the list of words of compound nouns. And then we're going to give the Spanish meaning. First, we're going to have the list of compound nouns. And then we are going to have the Spanish meaning of those compound nouns. Vamos a hacer dos cosas. Vamos a tener la lista de los compound nouns, de los ejemplos. Y lo vamos a escribir todo de una sola vez. Vamos a escribir todas las palabras en inglés de los compound nouns, y luego vamos a ir uno por uno, lo más seguro es que lo hagamos en la eh, mañana, lo que es la eh, traducción al español, para que vayamos nosotros sabiendo qué significan esos compound nouns. There are many words that maybe you know what is the meaning in Spanish, but you are going to find another words that are not like very familiar with your vocabulary. So we are going to start with this topic. So let me share this screen. So we have here the document and I'm going to write the information that I have for you. So the topic for today Give me a second because it is like kind of, I don't know, slow. Compound nouns. We're going to talk about compound nouns. I have an example first. It says, last night I took my roommate to a drive in to see the latest blockbuster. Let's read this example. Last night, I took my roommate, I took my roommate, and I'm going to mark these words. Roommate.
this one. I took my roommate to a drive-in. to see the latest blockbuster. So in this example, we have three words that um, I'm marking. We have a roommate. because I cannot mark this word. We have roommate. We have drive in. And we have blockbuster. So, in that example, we have three different words that we are marking, but why? What I am marking at those words? And in this case, um, you can see that we are like making a describing of a, a night, but we have another part of this example. It says, it was a fun night, but it was also an example of an event. In this case, we have that this one is an example of an event that can be described with nouns. We have nouns describing the things that they uh, did last night. And these ones are not just the common nouns that we use when we are like uh, uh, talking in English. We use many different type of nouns to refer to people we love, places we take them, and things we enjoy together. But in this story, short story for, for in, in this example, we use a couple of examples of one particular type of noun. There are the compound nouns. Tenemos ese ejemplo donde estamos marcando tres palabras que son bastante, por ejemplo, roommate. Es una palabra bastante común que nosotros utilizamos o ya hemos escuchado muchas veces y sabemos qué significa, que es como el compañero de habitación, el compañero de cuarto. Pero esas tres palabras que nosotros tenemos marcadas ahí son compound nouns. No son nombres como nosotros lo utilizamos, así como, eh, por ejemplo, car, eh, frog, t-shirt, eh, computer and all of the things. Son diferentes. And we are going to see why are they different and how to create this kind of uh, words. Because uh, we need some elements to create these compound nouns. So the first thing, what is a compound noun? La primera pregunta y lo que necesitamos saber, ¿qué es o qué son estas palabras? What is a compound noun? So in this case, in grammar, a compound refers to a word that is used or that is made up of two or more existing parts of elements. And we have adjectives, we have verbs, we have preposition, and also we have nouns. And it can all be described as a compound. Así que nosotros tenemos en gramática, ¿verdad? Esta parte que es la creación de palabras que se hacen de dos elementos ya que, que ya existen, como lo puede ser un adjetivo, verbo, preposición e incluso los mismos nombres.
As compounds, they are made of two or more existing words combined into one, such as house top, that is a noun, many side, that is an adjective, play act, that is a verb, or open, and that is a preposition. Tenemos eh, palabras de las cuales nosotros agarramos partes de otras eh, palabras que ya existen, las unimos en una sola y siguen funcionando como eso, como verbo, como nombre, como adjetivo, como eh, en este caso como preposición, pero ahora están unidas y tienen un significado, podemos decir que diferente. It says that a compound noun in simplified terms uh, is a noun made of or of two or more ex existing words. They are extremely common in English. And the word is snowstorm, is snowstorm, la tormenta de nieve, is an example of a simple type of a compound noun form from the word snow and storm. Compound nouns aren't just form from nouns, but other types are of word as well, such as verbs, adjectives, and prepositions. And you can see these kind of examples. But give me a moment. Oh my God, what is that? It's kind of weird, this thing. Okay. So in this case, we have words like run off take down in short cake. One main thing to keep in mind about compound nouns is that they have a meaning that is distinct from their component parts. For example, a blackboard. A blackboard, ya sabemos que significa blackboard, but this one is an object that a teacher writes on with chalk, while a black, board separate black board is any black piece of wood si nosotros tenemos la palabra unida black board significa pizarra pizarrón pero si tenemos black board separado es una pieza de madera en color negro which one What is the what is the the screen? What I was 
sharing. It's the same document, I think. This one. So in this case, um, mm -hmm. in this case, um, when we have these compound nouns, we have like two words into one. Um, in some cases, we are going to have these words uh, write it together or separated by a hyphen but we are going to see the different type of compound nouns and how to write them. So, in este caso de los nombres compuestos, estos compound nouns, es unir estos elementos, unir estas palabras, formar una nueva y darle un significado diferente de las partes que lo componen. Eh, for example, we have the no storm, la tormenta de nieve. Is, uh, we have a snow and we have a storm. A snow, nieve, a storm, tormenta. Sí hace referencia a la palabra que está compuesta, pero son separadas, no tienen ese mismo significado. En cambio, al unirlas, pues ya significa una tormenta de nieve. So that is like the main thing about um, the compound nouns. The uh, meaning that they have when we um, have those words together. We're going to see some examples of the compound nouns. So let's see. In English, uh, there are three many ways that we form compound nouns. So, so you know that in this case, we have three different ways to create these compound nouns. As is often the case in English, there is no single rule that states which of these methods is correct. When it comes to forming a specific compound nouns, you will either need to memorize compound nouns as you come across them, or use a, a different resource to learn compound nouns. Tenemos tres maneras diferentes de crear compound nouns in English. Y no es como que esas tres son específicamente la manera correcta de crear compound nouns. Ustedes saben que en inglés también hay muchas eh, contradicciones y eh, Muchos cambios y todo eso. Entonces, estas son como las tres maneras que nosotros vamos a estudiar de cómo crear estos compound nouns. So, the first one. We're going to see the first one. Is com um, compound nouns as a single word. Compound nouns. as a single word. Van a ser una sola palabra. And we have this type of compound noun is formed by combining two words from different parts of a speech together into a single word. And we have some examples. Vamos a ver estas palabras que se forman en una sola Quiere decir que no se separan ni por coma, ni por punto, ni por nada, sino una sola palabra de la cual tomamos diferentes partes de, eh, o different parts of speech, que son como el verbo, adverbio y todo eso, y vamos a crear nuevas palabras. Vamos a ver esos ejemplos, because we have noun plus noun, verb plus noun, adjective plus noun, preposition plus noun, and verb plus preposition. Vamos a ver qué palabras salen de esas combinaciones.
Okay, now we have the um, the list. We're going to see some examples here. We have the first one that is noun plus noun. So in this case, you are using two nouns to create this compound noun. And we have the first one, lunch time. We have lunch time. We have boyfriend. Milkman, firefighter, and a headache. So in this case, we have like a, some of these words are very, very common for us because we have seen these words or we are like use these words uh, in our daily uh, speech. So in that case, they are not like a uh, very different words. In this case, we have a uh, previous knowledge about those words. Así que aquí tenemos la primera, eh, los primeros ejemplos de estos eh, compound nouns de nombre más nombre. Estamos utilizando dos nombres. En la primera, lunch time. Lunch and time. Y se refiere al almuerzo, ¿verdad? A la hora de comer el almuerzo. Then we have boyfriend. And in this case, we are using the word boy and the word friend. Boy, niño, chico, friend, amigo. Pero en este caso, al unirlos, no se refiere a un amigo en términos de nombre masculino, sino a un novio. Then milkman, milk and man. Esa es la persona que entrega, ¿verdad? La leche o el, lo que nosotros conocemos como lechero. The firefighter es el bombero. Fire, fuego, fighter, luchador. Son los que luchan contra el fuego. It has sense. And then we have the heart, the heart age. Earth, H, Earth, corazón, H es como un dolor. Así que es como un dolor en el corazón. Así que ahí tenemos noun plus noun. Let's see the second one. Verb plus noun. Tenemos verbo más nombre. And we have here jailbreak, haircut el corte de cabello wrong time turn table sweatshirt table Embaskill. Then we have adjective plus noun. And we have a smartphone. Bluebird. Red hand, greenhouse. Preposition plus noun. And we have here, verb, I mean, downtown,
we have bystander. Underworld. In overtime. Then we have verb plus preposition. In this case, we are not using nouns. Aquí no vamos a utilizar nombres, sino que vamos a utilizar verbo y preposición. We have breakdown. Offshoot. Downturn. Input. Upright. So in this case, we have the single words. Estas son en la categoría de las single words porque estamos combinando eh, different parts of speech, eh, diferentes tipos o categorías de palabras. Las estamos combinando en una sola. Entonces, estos son la primera categoría que nosotros tenemos de los compound nouns donde utilizamos diferentes categorías para crear nuevas palabras que se refieran a algo en específico. Then, we have the second type. Vamos a ver el segundo tipo. These ones are compound nouns as a separate words. Aquí ya van separadas. In this one, or in this type of compound nouns, um, it is formed by using two separate words together that are acting uh, together grammatically as a single unit. This type of compound nouns is different from a noun phrase because one word is an action as a modifier of another. We need to be very careful with this kind of um, compound nouns as they may look identical uh, to an instance of two separate words that aren't being used as a compound noun. For example, the compound noun hot dog refers to a food, while the separate words hot dog refers to a hairy animal that is very warm and a good boy. In este caso, los um, las compound nouns que vienen separadas, en este caso no las vamos a ver así unidas, sino que las vamos a, hacer, las vamos a ver separadas, en este caso pueden ser o compound nouns o simplemente palabras que están juntas, como en el caso del hot dog. Nosotros sabemos que un hot dog, eh, cuando depende del contexto en el que lo estemos utilizando, es una comida. But, if we are using in another context, y lo utilizamos de manera separada, hot, de caliente o tibio, y dog, de perro, pues estamos hablando de un perro, ¿verdad? Eh, que pues está muy calientito, que es muy tibio, pero no nos estamos refiriendo a la comida. Entonces, en este caso sí tenemos que ser, eh, eh, we need to be very careful and we need to pay attention to the context of the people that, it is, that is speaking and using those compound nouns.
So we are going to see some examples. And we have here noun plus noun, verb plus noun, and adjective plus noun. In this case, we are just going to have three different um, like a uh, combination of words. So we're going to see what are they. We have the first one that is noun plus noun. We have house party. Grandfather clock. Sweater vest. Christmas tree. Then we have verb plus noun. A slam dunk. Jump cut. Then we have the adjective plus noun. Quick fix. Easy money. Double agent. Close call. So basically in this case, we are going to like paying attention to the context of the uh, phrases that people is using or uh, what is the topic that they are like uh, expressing or what is the thing that they want to say. And you need to pay attention to the words because in that case, they have a different meaning. And then we have the number three. That is the last one. Número tres, compound noun with um, hyphens. Estos son los que están separados por el guión. This one or this type uh, of compound nouns is often uh, confused with the other two types. Using hyphens to form compound nouns is particularly common in newer or rarely used words. If a compound noun is formed from more than two words, it will almost always use hyphens. Estas son como, um, no tan comunes, eh, frases no tan comunes, o que son palabras raramente utilizadas, o si tienen más de dos palabras, se van a separar por guión. Ese es el hyphen, lo vamos a separar por guión.
Tell me, Diana. Para ingresar a las clases de ahora en adelante va a ser por medio del correo electrónico, ¿verdad? Sí, eh, como Zoom tuvo una nueva actualización, entonces ahora sí tienen que hacer ese proceso. Eh, sería ingresando la confirmación de, de ingreso del día anterior, dándole clic al, al botón azul y luego nos envía, nos reenvía un un mensaje donde ya podemos ingresar. Exactamente, así que tienen que ingresar directamente del correo, o oh, como les explicaba, por eso les mandaba, no, creo que solo se lo mandé al otro grupo, pero creo que les explicaron que eh, también lo pueden hacer a través del ID, pero sí, eh, está un poco complicado ahora lo de la entrada, pero ya le van a ir ustedes eh, agarrando la, la práctica a esa nueva actualización de Zoom. Bueno, gracias. Uh -huh. Así que si pueden ir ingresando eh, antes, solo para ir viendo lo de, la, lo de los problemas que, que se pueden llegar a dar con, con, um, con el acceso de Zoom, estaría mucho que mejor para que no estén ustedes batallando verdad, con eso eh, por mucho tiempo, sino que ya tengan listo toda esa parte. <coughs> eh, we have a couple of minutes. Acuérdense que esta semana vamos a terminar el día jueves. So, we are going to end the session, eh, the week number two tomorrow. So, for that reason, you need to work on the platform and you need to um, complete section number three for tomorrow. So, if you are not working yet on the platform, you need to do it because tomorrow is the date in which you are going to complete the section number three. And if not, they are going to tell you that you are not working on the platform and you need to be on date on, I mean, tienen que, que estar, ¿verdad? Actualizados con las actividades. En el caso de ustedes, si ya trabajan en la sección tres, pues excelente. Y si no, pues tienen que irse poniendo al día con sus actividades en la plataforma. Um, Acuérdense que ya mañana terminamos la semana número dos y entramos a la semana número tres. Y luego, pues obviamente entramos a la semana cuatro y se termina el curso. Y si no se han puesto al día, pues van a tener problemas para eh, continuar con los cursos. Así que tienen que ponerse al día con sus eh, actividades en la plataforma. So for this one, we have different examples. And we have this one that is know it all. Know it all. En este caso se tiene que eh, escribir, ¿verdad? Los guiones. Y cuando lo estemos utilizando de, for de forma escrita, lo tenemos que escribir así para referirnos al que lo sabe todo, ¿no? Mother-in-law. Que es para la suegra. Mother-in-law. Show off. Howard Marshall. Jack in the box. City States. Hocus Pocus. And Merry Go Round. So in that case, we need to be careful with the way we write um, <clears throat> those uh, compound nouns, because in this case, you need to write the hyphens. And if you're not, in that case, you are not using this compound noun, you are just using separate elements or separate words to express another thing. Now, we have the plural forms. Vamos a ver los plurales. 
plural forms of compound nouns. So in that case, we have just singular words in the list. And now we are going to see what are the, um, the plural form of some uh, compound nouns. So we are going to see. And we have some different rules about how to make compound nouns into plural nouns, depending on which of the three types you are dealing with. In este caso, para transformarlos en plurales, tenemos diferentes reglas dependiendo de cuál de los tres tipos estamos utilizando. Si tenemos el número uno, there are plural um, of single words. We have this type of compound nouns is the most likely to follow uh, the rules of plural nouns. And you can take a um, look on different words and examples. And in this case, we're going to use the uh, the same rule that we use for the plurals, adding S or ES at the end of the noun. Le vamos a agregar simplemente S, E, S. So here we have the example of these ones. In here, we are just going to add S or ES at the end of the nouns. And we have the example, child born, and making it plural, we have child boards. Then we have eyelash, and then we have eyelashes. In that case, we're adding ES at the end of the noun. Then we have plural for multiple for a multiple word compound nouns. And in this case, we have like this type of compound nouns gets more complicated. Sometimes this word is stick to the rules and all you need to do is make the last word plural as in wedding planners or soft drinks. However, things get, get more complicated. For example, the plural of attorney, general attorneys general. The reason is that the word attorney is acting as the main word as in general is specifying what job the attorney has. In this case, it make more sense to turn attorney into a plural when referring to more than one attorney uh, general. Keep this in mind and we look at last compound now. 
En ese caso es un poco más complicado porque tenemos que ver cuál de las palabras es la que vamos a poner en plural, porque tiene que llevar una, eh, como una especificación de a qué se refiere la palabra. And the last one is plural of compound nouns with hyphens, que es el tercer tipo que tenemos. En um, in this case, um, write the hyphen in compound nouns, uh, follow the rule and get an S or ES add on to the last word. Like for example, in Jack in the boxes or fixer uppers. Other times that hyphenate compound nouns don't follow the parent as in sister-in-law or runners up. As was the case in multiple word compound nouns, these words turn the main word rather than the final word into plural. In este caso, cuando tenemos eh, compound nouns con hyphens, con eh, el guión, a veces la última de las palabras que van en el, en el grupo es el que se le agrega la S, pero en otros casos esa es la primera palabra a la que le agregamos la S. Como en el caso de sister-in-law, que es cuñada, le agregamos S a uh, the word sisters in law. The last one is in the same um, way, but sisters need to be plural. And here we have some examples. Remember that I was saying that we are going to write all of the words and then tomorrow we are going to give the uh, Spanish meaning. Mañana vamos a dar todos los uh, significados en español. Right now we are just going to write the examples. But I need a table in which we are going to uh, write the words, the examples in this case. I'm going to write just 20 right now. This one. So in this case, we're going to have compound noun and Spanish. No, no la dejaba entrar porque hay una actualización en Zoom. Por eso es que no podían entrar a la, a la sesión hoy. So, the first one, we have backlash. Then we have oatmeal. Fireman. Their devil, bathroom, password, foolproof, butterfly. Teardrop, household, air drum, checkmate, bind yarn. So, earthquake, look work, worship,
ladybug. Current house. Maybe some of these words are very familiar for you because some of them we are uh, we use a lot in English and some of the others um, you are not familiar with them, but we are going to see the meaning tomorrow because I'm just going to write the three um, different lines or example of words and then we're going to discuss the meaning of them. We have notebook, firefly, good throws, baseball, pancake, flashback. Daydream, tapeworm, her beard, In the last uh, group of words that we are going to write here, So in this case, we have this list of examples of compound nouns. And you know that we have a lot of words right now because we have three different groups of words. But um, 
tomorrow we are going to see what are the meaning of these words. We are going to give the uh, Spanish meaning of those words. And we are going to see the other that um, have in the list. They are like, um, Two, uh, two, four, eight, two, four, six, eight, ten, like 12 more words per group. So tomorrow we are going to end with the topic of the compound nouns and we're going to continue with other topics. Um, and we're going to write all of the words in Spanish to have this vocabulary because you know that it is very important for you to create vocabulary and in this case, with these very common words in English, because they like to use them a lot. Así que esto nos va a servir a nosotros como vocabulario, eh, porque en inglés, verdad, las personas nativas les gusta utilizar mucho este tipo de, de compound nouns, así que no es como algo eh, que no vayamos a utilizar. Esto sí lo vamos a utilizar mucho. So, tomorrow we are going to continue with this uh, topic. And we are going to end the session here. And we are going to see each other tomorrow in session number four of the second week. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Have a good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow.